Welcome everyone, Quistine here on Serious Gaming with my dungeon guide for World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic for Akenai Crypts on both Heroic and Normal difficulties. On Normal, this is the dungeon that you'd probably want to do at anywhere between 66 to 68, if not even higher. It's not particularly hard, but you may want to wait before diving right in. You certainly don't want to do it the moment you get access to it, because it's a bit harder than that. Actually, all of the Akin dun uh, dungeons are harder than they seem at first glance. On normal, that is, while you're leveling. If you do have really good gear transferring over from vanilla, that's a different discussion. You can probably do this much earlier. But overall, I'd say do it at a higher level than you generally might think. On Heroic, this may or may not be the easiest dungeon in the entire expansion. It depends on the tuning. It does, ha however, have a lot of potential here. See, the mobs that you're going to be uh, dealing with, the vast majority of them at least, ha are mobs that don't necessarily have very high HP and have low armor. So, physical DPS, Enhancement Shaman, Fury Warriors, and Hunters to a degree, are all very useful to, for killing these mobs very, very quickly. And the mobs themselves are not particularly dangerous. Yes, they do have some nasty abilities, but the most important thing about them is that they summon adds. The Akenai Soul Priest, Vindicators, and Monks will summon adds, ghostly adds. Now, these adds do a lot of damage, far more so than the regular mobs, and do have annoying abilities, including a very long mind control, potentially, that you have to deal with. But overall, they're not really hard to take down. You could potentially go down the AoE route. My personal preference is to go down the burst DPS route. Whereas in, you're not going to pull very large groups. And instead, you're just going to pull smaller groups. Kill them very quickly. Now, in this particular group, we didn't have physical DPS. And we paid the price. I'd strongly recommend at least having one melee, if not two melee, for this particular dungeon on Heroic. They will help you immensely on the first boss, and you will be able to deal with most of the trash with ease. In fact, you could do this entire dungeon, though not necessarily optimally, but you could do this entire dungeon with just physical DPSers, with Enhanced Machine and Fury Warrior, uh, Hunter, Rogue, etc. You could do it. You would have some issues later on, but for the most part, you'd be able to handle it just fine. Now, on retail, this dungeon used to be somewhat annoying because we just didn't have the same DPS as we do nowadays. And because a lot of people didn't necessarily care about doing it. But nowadays, since people have really figured out what works, what doesn't, how to optimize their classes, it's kind of a joke, really. How much of a joke will depend on the tuning, especially for Blizzard, but I don't think this one is going to be difficult at all. The key point is to deal with the non elite mobs that are going to get spawned, prevent the mind control from going out, and then deal with the elite mobs, but they'll fall fairly easily. Just don't overpull, and you should not have too many issues. As you enter the dungeon, you'll want to deal with either one side or the other. And the thing about this particular dungeon is that the mobs that are at the entrance are the mobs that you're going to be dealing with for the vast majority of the dungeon. So if you can handle them, you can handle most of the things that this dungeon will throw against you, with the exception of the bosses, of course. But anyway, you go on either the left side or the right side. I personally prefer to go on the left. Just be careful that you don't over pull. Uh, go through this room, get to the end, go up the stairs, go through the corridor, killing mobs along the way, and then you will eventually get to a bridge. Now on this bridge, you do have uh, raging souls. Now these guys can knock you back, just kill them, focus on them, and then deal with the regular mobs. Not too hard to, to deal with, just you want to be careful when dealing with the trash that you don't get overwhelmed. There is the potential for you to get Zerg down here or to have so many nasty effects. In terms of group composition, I strongly recommend having uh, uh, having someone that can curse, that can be useful. Having one, two physical DPSers, that's also useful. A Paladin tank is a benefit here. Anyway, once you deal with that, you will reach the first boss. Now, this boss is probably the reason why a lot of tanks, a lot of warriors, and a lot of paladins will want to do this particular instance. He isn't necessarily very hard if you know what you're doing. But if you don't, the Watcher, Shirak the Watcher, is going to ruin your day. See, he puts several debuffs on you. 
he puts a, a, a debuff that will slow down your spell casting, depending dependent on the range you're from the boss. He will pull you towards him, and on top of that, he will do a debuff in melee. So all of that stuff is annoying. If you're playing as a melee, don't get too high stacks. If you're playing as a caster, as a healer especially, you can reset your stacks. It's based on distance. So not getting very high stacks is very important for a healer. You need to keep the tank up. He doesn't hit too hard. The problem for the tank is that the tank is going to get very a very large number of debuffs. So after a particular point in this fight, the tank is just going to drop dead. He won't be able to survive the damage. I mean... I was tanking here in tier 6 gear. Now, granted, this server is overtuned to an extreme level, and my healer wasn't exactly a superb player either, but at the same time, I was just getting hammered here. The, the way the debuff works is, well, just fairly nasty. Now, we did manage to kill it, uh, but you want to be careful about that. And yes, he also has an AoE ability that he does because he's going to focus on someone. But honestly, that's not really the problem. The problem is the fact he slows down your cast, the fact he puts debuffs, on, uh, the uh, damage debuff on you. That Those are the issues. You can li try a line of sighting that may or may not work. Uh, distance should work and you kill the boss. Maybe you kill him and everyone dies after that, but you can kill a boss. And honestly, if you've gotten to this point, congrats. That's most of Akunai crypts there. That's the difficult part because you've dealt with the hardest part of the dungeon. And it really shouldn't be too difficult if you have any decent level of gear. Anyway, after the first boss, you have a corridor. You have more, mo more of the mobs that you've already dealt with. And then you get to some skeletons. Now, these skeletons, uh, these skeletons, not too dangerous, don't do too much damage, but they do reset threat quite often. My recommendation for people to deal with these guys is, sure, you can try AOE them down, but if other mobs in raids uh, have been any kind of guide to me, is that it's probably best if you just single target them and let the tank uh, have that one targeted, don't do AoE, just single target. And yes, they might be, go for the healer when they're resetting threat and that is an issue, but I'd say single target, uh, single targeting them is probably a better idea than just going crazy with the AoE and having them uh, go all over the place. Anyway, once you've dealt with those skeletons, more, uh, more Akanai, Tranai, and then we get to the final boss room. Very short dungeon. That this is one of the reasons it's so easy. It's it's a easy it's a fairly short dungeon. It doesn't really take a ridiculous amount of time to get through it. But anyway, in this room you have a bunch of skeletons that do send their armor, so that's annoying for tanks to deal with. And they, though they only stack it to to five, they don't go too extremely, but they can do some reasonable damage if you're if you're tanking too many. And then you have these uh, necromancers. Now you kind of want to focus them down. Because obviously as spellcasters, they're they're going to hurt the tanks more than a bunch of skeletons. Well, especially if the tank is uh, is either a warrior or a paladin. Especially a paladin who will have no problems tanking uh, very large groups of these uh, skeletons. Not any real issue. And then you get to the final boss. Exarch Maladar. Actually, it's two bosses for the price of one. And that can be fairly... Um, fairly annoying what he does is that he can disorient you as a tank he can also summon a ghost uh, from a player like he targets a player he puts a debuff on them that summon ghosts uh, you want to deal with the ghost a as a priority here the dps messed that up uh, the one thing is to understand that as a healer as a range dps you just want to be able to keep your distance and that shouldn't be too much uh, of an issue at a quarter of his HP, he will summon the Avatar of the Martyred. Now, this is where things uh, become a problem. The Avatar of the Martyred, which you want to kill, by the way, because he actually drops loot that you want. The av Avatar of the Martyred uh, hits pretty hard and has Mortal Strike and Sunder Armor. So, this is probably the point where if you have Bloodlust, you probably want to use it, assuming you have it available. Uh, here it was actually kind of bad the way the fact that we 
the DPSers didn't understand that they had to deal with the stolen souls that was creating issues. And obviously, we did man we did manage to kill it. We didn't uh, we didn't wipe uh, here, but yeah, it was pretty nasty. I mean, this is a joke of a dungeon, and we royally screwed up, and we still managed to do it without wiping here, and uh, avoid uh, losing the loot uh, from the Avatar of the Martyrs. In fact, melee DPS, physical DPS, will want to do him because he drops a very good cloak that they want, that they desire. So, getting this guy done is very much uh, recommended. Some, some pretty good items from this place. The tank shoulders, the cloak, those kind of things. Uh, it, it makes it useful. Anyway, that's it for this particular dungeon. Questine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And don't forget to talk with the Naru that spawns once you kill the final boss if you have the quest for that. Stay tuned.